Welcome in, everybody, to episode 11 of the Chiefs Uncovered on the Undroppables Network. I'm Grindberg, bringing you everything Chiefs-related weekly on the Undroppables Network. Welcome in. Here's our top story of the day. Well, 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 Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rashi Rice is back hitting the headline news. He is under investigation for potentially hitting a photographer at a Dallas nightclub on Monday night. Rice, who faces eight charges in connection with a multi-car crash that happened on March 30th in Dallas, is adding more fuel to the fire with this potentially new incident. Rice's 2024 availability was already in question after Roger Goodell went on record stating Rice could be facing punishment under the league's personal conduct policy. The Chiefs covered their bases by trading up in the first round to select Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy. And after signing Marquise Brown in free agency, everything was falling into place for the Chiefs until more news happening here on the Rice uh, Rice front. Since the Chiefs started their offseason, wide receiver Rashi Rice has been in the spotlight for unfortunate reasons, stemming from all his offseason developments. The 2023 second round pick is already facing eight charges following his involvement in a multi uh, vehicle crash in Dallas. A new report indicates that is there's a different incident on the radar, and that happened on Monday night, and he is facing a multi-suspension uh, game suspension, Schefter reported last month. As the offseason continues to get worse, things are coming up, and now he has been co- the confirmed driver. Eight charges against potentially narcotics in the vehicle. We're not sure. There is still, uh, you know, an investigation going on with that. Now he could have been uh, potentially uh, involved in this assault. So at that nightclub, this, if this is indeed true, there could be a lengthy suspension looming for Rasheed Rice. And that is bad news after the Chiefs had a kind of a lackluster 2023 on the offensive side of the ball with Rice being only one of the bright spots in that passing attack. You know, he had 102 targets, which is amazing considering he only played 60% of the snaps. His snap count increased as the Chief realized they didn't have anything outside of Kelsey and Rice within that passing game. So the final eight games, Rice averaged a 78% snap count in 16 regular season games with the Chiefs. This past year, Rice broke out with 79 receptions for 938 yards and seven touchdowns. The number of 55 overall selection in the 2023 draft was a major contributor to the Chiefs offense, providing Patrick Mahomes with a stable target in the slot receiver spot. The addition of Marquise Brown was supposed to open things up this year for Rice. The Chiefs made another big splash last week by moving up in the draft to grab the speedster Xavier Worthy. So what happens to the Chiefs if, you know, Rashi Rice decides, you know, I'm going to do something stupid again and get a suspension. And that's what is probably looming here. Brown should be the Chiefs' number one wide receiver out of the gate if Rashi Rice misses time. The one thing that jumps out about Brown is his obvious speed, his 4.27 40-yard dash back in his pro day in 2019 started turning heads. He was a you know speedster in the track, track and field era. In fact, in in in, in 2021, when he had his thousand yard campaign, he had 91 catches that took place no further than nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. So his yak yards are there. At the same time, he hauled in four touchdowns that were 20 plus that year. So a deep thread in the making there for Lamar Jackson. Um, so we're, we're going to see potentially that deep thread open things up for Patrick Mahomes in the field down low. It's all to say that this should provide Andy Reid with a versatile weapon, you know, capable of creating big plays in a variety of ways. And they've also added a similar weapon 
to the Arsenal and Rashi Rice. We talked about him a little bit deeper last week on the show after his uh, his his, uh, his draft capital. Um, he is a speedy guy. He brings that asset to Mahomes and Kelsey that they haven't seen since the departure of Tyreek Hill. I'm not comparing, nor I'm predicting you know, predicting that Worthy will be the next Tyreek Hill, but they do have some striking similarities in their game, their speed, their ball tracking ability. I'm very, very excited to see what Isaiah uh, Xavier Worthy can do in a Chiefs uniform. He completely put social media down and into a frenzy when he broke the 40-yard dash at 4.21 at the NFL Combine. Worthy is just not a deep threat. He's a great route runner too. He cut down on the amount of drops last season. I think the Chiefs really, really were paying attention to that. He caught 75 passes for 1,000 yards and five touchdowns for the Longhorns while playing alongside the other Texas standout wide receiver, Adonine Mitchell, who was taken by the Colts uh, later on at pick 52. So there was some competition in that uh, in that receiving room, but also they had a great tight end in Saunders as well. So a lot of competition, but worthy was the number one target in that offense. Worthy is also a very underrated route runner. One of the most you know, impressive aspects to Worthy's skill set is his technical route running ability. In fact, he is considered one of the top route runners in college football this year. Andy Reid is going to have a lot of fun getting him involved in that offense. You know, he has consistently and effectively been able to make room in the short to intermediate routes, but also become a burner off the line and create an open space. He's going to be able to track those balls real nice. You know, Worthy is currently projected as the Chiefs number three wide receiver behind Rashi Rice and uh, Marquise Brown with Rice in trouble with the law. I am looking at him to serve a suspension in 2024, further improving the odds of Xavier Worthy making the team, getting on the lineup, getting into special teams, but not only that, serving as a, a an important role on the offense, especially earlier in the season uh, when you consider his returning capabilities uh, so Xavier Worthy should be uh, be put into a role probably sooner than most people expected, uh, especially with all this information uh, coming through in the news with Rashi Rice. It's just not great situation for Rashi Rice and and the Chiefs. Uh, you know they've they've had some issues in the past with wide receivers and uh, you know having that, that that edge to them like Tyreek Hill and now Rashi Rice is in the sin bin and we'll see what happens with him uh, moving forward. This case is continuing to evolve. It feels like we are nonstop talking about Rashi Rice in the Chiefs Uncovered uh, a podcast here. So we'll see what happens moving forward, but uh, let's put that to bed and, and continue on with the show. Uh, so, you know, that was our top news of the day. Uh, but, you know, we are going to get into some more stuff. We're going to kind of quickly go over the draft itself, deep dive into that. You know, there was some uh, some some issues there at training camp last year with these wide receivers. Uh, they, the, the Chiefs just had their rookie mini camp come in. So uh, we're going to touch base on that. So we're going to get all that going uh, on the Undroppables Network. So you're listening to the Chiefs Uncovered. Uh, I'm Grindberg and... Uh, we're going to be here all the time. So here we go, boys and girls. The fantasy football season never stops. Did you know you can already draft for the 2024 season on Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play fantasy football? The big board is a pre-draft NFL contest that is got all the incoming rookies in the player pool. Draft your team in 20 rounds, and that's it. Best ball format, you get the optimal score to fill your starting lineup. A great way to get your dynasty startup draft picked without any league management. Only $10 to enter and over $2 million in prizes up for grabs. Be sure to sign up with underdog promo code UNDROPPABLE. That's UNDROPPABLE and you'll get your first deposit match up to $100. And now back to this show. 
So the Chiefs opened up their mini camp, rookie mini camp this weekend and concluded their three day camp on Monday as 74 players took the field in effort to show that they belong on the back-to-back -back defending world champions in 2024. Those players included the Chiefs' seven draft picks, 17 undrafted free agent signees, eight rookie camp eligible players who were already on the roster prior to the draft, four veteran trial players, and 38 rookie trial participants. The weekend began with the annual rookie dinner where all the camp's participants joined the coaching staff, several Chiefs alumni, and a catered meal in the press box at the stadium. You know, the dinner also included remarks from the chairman, Cl Clark Hunt, and President Mark Donovan in an effort to welcome all 74 players to the Chiefs family. After that, it was all football from there. The camp kicked off its on-field drills on Saturday and ran through on Monday afternoon, providing every participant with a chance to lay the foundation of their off-season training program. A couple things to note here. We had some, you know, notable, uh, you know, markings at you know that that day so undrafted free agent signing wide receiver philip brooks had a strong day with multiple receptions on saturday rookie tight end jared wiley had a solid practice highlighted by a strong catch over the middle during the seven on seven drills in which he plucked the ball out of the air Wiley is a guy that's kind of gaining steam these days. He's very uh, similar pro profile to our Travis Kelsey. They're looking at him uh, to maybe take on some receiving duties in, in, in the future there. Uh, some Somebody we should really keep an eye on in a wide open uh, uh, tight end room outside of Travis Kelsey, who's aging. Uh, rookie tryout wide receiver Jaron Hayek drew several targets throughout the practice. You know, undrafted free agent running back Carson Steele made a ha one-handed catch in the flat during the 11-on-11 11 -11 drills. Somebody we mentioned last week on the show as an undrafted free agent, somebody we should maybe circle in there as somebody that could potentially make the, the team Carson Steele as a kind of like a fullback kind of role. Rookie tryout linebacker Bryce Gallagher recorded an interception on the 7-on-7 seven -seven drills. And then on sand, uh, Sunday, the practice was held indoors due to the rain and they managed to get plenty of work done. Xavier Worthy had a strong practice. He had six catches and a, an impressive grab downfield, which had to adjust in an overthrown pass. Worthy went on to catch passes on all three levels in the practice during the practice. So, you know, he's looking good already in these rookie camp so looking good there Wiley again on Sunday had another strong day with multiple catches he made a full extension catch in the flat during the 11 on 11 drills you know another information here that we should really be keeping our eye on is former rugby star Louis Rezamet who signed with the Chiefs early this offseason showed off his speed and agility on the 11 and 11 drills he caught a pass in the flat before man maneuvering through the traffic for a big gain Somebody that we should really be keeping our eye on here is Louis Zamet after, uh, you know, the Chiefs brought him in. He is a former star rugby player in England, and he's been brought in to kind of be a wide receiver, running back hybrid kind of guy. And somebody that might be able to play in the slot potentially if uh, someone like Rashi Rice misses some games. So we'll see what happens there. Zamet, uh, Reese Zamet is a, is a guy that many thought may not even have a chance to snip in the roster, but now there is some more and more chatter of that happening. Now, Monday, uh, you know, May 6th, uh, there was some stuff that happened as well. Worthy, another busy day, had two touchdown catches on the 7-7 seven and seven red zone drills. Uh, there were periods on Monday where he was on 11-11 11 and 11, uh, and 7-on-7. Seven seven. He was lights out. He showed his impressive short area quickness you know he he had a couple touchdowns there so something to really really stand out there and keep your eye on as things progress if he's already looking good in these rookie camps the the, the there is a lot of opportunity there for xavier worthy like i mentioned to really carve himself out a big role on the chiefs and uh he's another guy that we really got to kind of showcase here in our program because he's one of the guys that is really going to turn this offense around you know the chiefs haven't had 
a whole lot of success throwing the ball downfield since Hill's departure. Last year, 23 quarterbacks fired at least 47 passes of 20 plus yards downfield. And I said last week on the show, Mahomes ranked dead last uh, with that in his pe- passer rating. He had a passer rating of 49%, uh, 49.1 on balls that traveled 20 plus yards in the air. Bear in mind, the Chiefs had a lot of drops of passes in the downfield area last year. So I think they were a little bit more reluctant to throw the ball as the season progressed. Mahomes needs a wide receiver who can catch the ball downfield. And that's why they brought in Marquise Brown. That's why they brought in Xavier Worthy. The Chiefs drop percentage was 20% on catchable deep passes last year. By far the highest number in the league. They only had two touchdowns downfield all year. Worthy and Brown are more sure-handed receivers. And that brings the speed factor that can stretch the field way down the line here. So I am sure Andy Reid and Matt Nagy have been licking their chops. Now they can open their playbook and design some plays for these guys. The biggest winner here, of course, is Patrick Mahomes. He had the lowest uh, average depth of target of any quarterback in the NFL. Hollywood Brown and Worthy are just going to improve that. Would have been a perfect unison having all four of those guys, Kelsey, Worthy, Brown, and Rice, all together together. Worthy has some question marks about his size. We all know that he is not the biggest receiver. He only weighed in at 165 pounds at the combine, but people were saying he dropped 10 pounds just to break that record. So we'll see what happens. I would love to see him sitting in and around the 185 mark uh, to be really confident in the way his, his playing style will help benefit the Chiefs. The selection was a logical one. It was an exciting one for the franchise. Worthy will be the fastest player on the roster since the team had Tyreek Hill. And just bringing in a threat like that helps this veteran Chiefs team just become absolutely lethal. I can't fucking wait for this. The Chiefs are going to be a force for years to come. It's been crazy. A lot has been here. I keep saying that on this show. It's so much to process. This is the offseason. I can't wait to see what is going to happen with the Chiefs uh, this season and in training camp. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, how things shake up, uh, how these new rookies fall in to our lineup. We had some picks here. We had Xavier Worthy going in the first round, and then we had uh, you know BYU offensive lineman Kingsley Suamatia he's going to make an impact on that Chiefs team. Uh, that was a great pick. The Chiefs moved up uh, to, to grab them from the 49ers in round two. The BYU lineman was projected to be a first round pick in some mock drafts and became a cult favorite among scouts uh, in the 2024 NFL Combine. I think the Chiefs had him on their radar, like I mentioned last week on our show, at the 32 pick. But when Worthy was sl- sliding down, they couldn't help themselves, and they moved up to get worthy. Sue Matia is going to be coming in here, and he's going to add some longevity. He's going to be able to slide right into that Donovan Smith role, and uh, potentially Donovan Smith might be coming back. We'll see what happens, but he's going to go into that role. He's going to push Wanye Morris right out of the gate. The Chiefs have done a really good job in this draft, in my opinion, to solidify some of the, the holes in their lineup. The other one I talked a little bit about was uh, tight end Jared Wiley. You know, he's got an opportunity to to really make a difference in this lineup down the line. Uh, If he can figure out how to block, he's going to get in there way before uh, a guy like Irv Smith will. Round four, we had two picks. So we had the Wiley pick at 131, and then we had the Jaden Hicks safety pick at uh, 133. Great, great depth Peef, a guy that's going to be able to be used all over the field, not just at safety. He has some cornerback experience as well. He'll factor into the secondary and the post Legereus Sneed era as the Chiefs shuffle their pieces around to see who fits where. But Jaden Hooks should be coming in there and be gaining some steam right away. Rounds four and five, they picked up an offensive lineman in Hunter Norzad and Kamal Hayden, the cornerback uh, out of Tennessee. 
The cornerback is another one that, you know, slid down the board because of an injury riddled season. So we're hoping that Hayden can be a consistent player uh, for the Chiefs uh, and, and, and get him into the lineup on these spot starts as, as a depth piece. So Hunter Norad as the, as the offensive lineman, just another day three solid pick, pick up by the Chiefs to continue stocking up on their offensive line. You can never have too many of them. Uh, and then round seven, same situation. They continued that situation where they are trying to stockpile these offensive linemen. So they, they picked up CJ Hansen with their seventh round pick. The 23 year old projects just to be a backup, but he's got a great athletic profile and some testing was good. So he should have, uh, and, you know, an opportunity to make the team and, 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 and see what he can do from there. And then we mentioned a couple of those unrestricted, uh, like undrafted free agents and Amani Bailey and Carson Steele adding some depth to the running back room for our chiefs kingdom. So, uh, couple things in motion there. We had, uh, you know, the draft come, come and go, you know, we had rookie camp start, you know, this weekend, things are evolving with our chiefs right now and, uh, things are continually moving. Okay. So next week, the schedule is going to be, uh, announced. So the chiefs are going to find out how their schedule shakes up, what our home games are going to look like, who our big competitors are and which, part of the season is going to be the toughest stretch for us and when we're going to know our buy. So uh, we're going to talk about the, the schedule on our next episode of the Chiefs Uncovered because it's a really important piece that we should get through, kind of get some predictions on some games there too, potentially look at where our record could sit in compared to the rest of the league and uh, and just seeing how our outlook for 2024 looks as we continue through this offseason on the Chiefs Uncovered on the Undroppables Network. What an awesome time to be around the Chiefs Kingdom, back-to-back -back Super Bowls. We've got some momentum heading into 2024. A lot has changed for our team. We've lost some key players. We brought in some key players. So it's going to be really interesting to see how things drive out uh, in the future here. And, uh, you know, things are ramping up now. Rookie camp starts. Training camp's just around the corner. We're going to start seeing where things line up. So, uh, yeah, not too much to go over other than that. So that's it for this week of the Chiefs Uncovered, Episode 11 on the Undroppables Network. I appreciate you all for tuning in. You will be able to find this show and all the other Uncovered series on the Undroppables Network moving forward. We have a bunch of teams going right now when we're bringing in team-specific content. So if you like this, remember to like and to subscribe to our channel. Remember to, if you're into fantasy football, that the guys, um, Chalk, Jax, Wiz, Coder, we got uh, Dukes and Trav. They made a huge uh, contribution to the undroppables and they just released the UN score last week, which is the most comprehensive, uh, one of the most comprehensive rookie guides there are uh, for the wide receivers. Uh, this goes back to 2018 class. So you've got data that goes back six years. It is an incredible piece uh, for you to rock out your rookie draft. So please go ahead, find us on the undroppables, pay the 20 bucks, and get the UN score. You won't regret it when you're coming back winning your championship in fantasy football. The Indroppables are looking for anchors to drop NFL team-specific content. Follow us on socials and find out how you can become part of this elite team. Our turf, your content, their game. Let's fucking go. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and TikTok and all the socials where you can find all our stuff. Follow me on X at FF Canuck. That is it for today. I am back next time with, like we said, we're going to go over the Chiefs schedule and whatever breaking news that happens on the week. So from everybody on the Undroppables Network, I'm Grindberg. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.